good evening my dear upsc aspirant i welcome you all to sumjas daily news analysis so today only one session of editorial analysis will be there because in editorial i didn't find anything new rather than this particular topic because all other things are some political things are being discussed which is not important and the other one regarding omicron variant it's coming repeatedly for last two weeks so it's not that much important so this is the important topic like uh, a strategy of assertion is found regarding as to why china is inventing names for places in arunachal pradesh see china claims some 90000 square kilometer of arunachal pradesh as its territory it calls the area sangnan in the chinese language and thus makes repeated references to south tibet okay then see uh, china's ministry of civil affairs announced on wednesday that is december 29 that it has standardized the names of 15 places in Arunachal Pradesh which is acting in accordance with regulations on geographical names issued by the state council state council means which is equal to the chinese cabinet so the ministry of external affairs has dismissed the chinese invention in a statement the official spokesperson of the ministry said like this arunachal pradesh has always been and will always be an integral part of india so assigning invented names to places in arunachal pradesh does not alter this fact but before before that we have to think why is china giving names to places that are in india i told china is claiming some territory of arunachal pradesh see chinese maps show arunachal pradesh as a part of china and sometimes they refer it to as a so called arunachal pradesh that means china is making tremendous efforts to underline this unilateral claim to indian territory uh, the, the, because of this strategy only it is naming the places in arunachal pradesh so did china attempt to do something like this earlier also yes they have done see this is as per the counting this is second time because there's a second lot of standards names of place in arunachal pradesh that china has announced previously in the year 2017 on april 14 the ministry of civil affairs had issued official chinese names of six places in the state it has said at the time it was releasing a first batch of standardized names now According to relevant regulations on the management of place names the department has standardized some place names in China South Tibet region uh, and this have been released the first batch of the place names in South Tibet six in to- total like the Chinese government told the six names on that list written in the roman alphabet were wo gian ling nila rai qunden gerbori main qua bumola and nam kubi and nam kapu bri so the latitude and longitude listed with the names showed those places tawang kradadi vessiang siang siang means where michuka or minchuka is an emerging tourist destination anjo and subantri okay so these six places span the breadth of arunachal pradesh bogian ling in the west bumola in the east and other four located in the central part of the state see four and a half years later the chinese have renamed eight residential areas four mountains two rivers and a mountain pass according to the state run global times so this time too it has provided the latitudes and longitudes of this places but what is china's argument for claiming these areas see the people's republic of china disputes the legal status of mcmahon lion you know the lion between that is the boundary between tibet and british india this was agreed long back at the shimla convention officially the convention between great britain china and tibet in the year 1914 see china was represented at the shimla convention by a plenipotentiary of the republic of china what they declare in the year 1912 that after the king dynasty qing dynasty was overthrown that means the present communist government came to power only in 1949 when the people's republic was proclaimed the chinese representative did not consent to the shimla convention saying tibet had no independent authority to enter into international agreements so the mcmohan line named after henry mcmohan the chief british negotiator at shimla was drawn from the eastern border of bhutan to the isurasi pass on the china myanmar border china claims territory to the south of mcmohan line lying in the arunachal pradesh So China also bases its claims on the historical ties that have existed between the monasteries in Tawang and Lhasa. In the year 2017, Liu Kang, the then spokesperson of the Chinese Ministry of Foreign Affairs, said like this: "China has a coherent and clear standpoint of the border between China and India. It is proper action to announce these Chinese place names to the public, as it is according to the regulations established by the State Council." Now, what does China seek to gain from making these claims? See, as we mentioned earlier, it is a part of the Chinese strategy to assert its territorial claims over Indian territory. As a part of the strategy, China routinely issues statements of outrage whenever an Indian dignitary visits Arunachal Pradesh. Why it did so? It did so most recently when Vice President Vengayanaidu ji went there to address the State Assembly in October. 
Now, Beijing keeps harping on its consistent and clear position that the Indian position of Himachal Pradesh, though firmly established and recognized by the world, is illegal and asks New Delhi to stop taking actions to complicate the border issue. The first batch of renamings in 2017 had come days after the Dalai Lama visited Arunachal Pradesh, against which Beijing had lodged a strong protest. Spokesperson Lu at that time, however, claimed that the standardization was necessary since all names used in southern Tibet were inherited through word of mouth for generations by minority ethnic ethnic groups or ethnic groups. So these names reflect and indicate from one aspect that China's proposed on the sovereignty claim of South Tibet region has a prominent historical, cultural, administrative, and jurisdictional basis. Lu has said. Now, the changing of names is an ongoing process in China. Just like how Bombay was changed to Mumbai or Madras was changed to Chennai in India, it just so happens that the name standards are in uh, South Southern Tibet. Laying aggressive claims to territories on the basis of alleged historical injustices done to China is a part of Beijing's foreign policy playbook. Now, the claim of Taiwan is one such example as there are consistent efforts to change the facts on the ground in several disputed islands in the South China Sea. The aggression is at all times backed in overt and covert waves by the waves by the use of china's economic and military muscle now you will be thinking will the new border law adopted by china complicate the situation along with the india china border see china's national legislature that is the national people congress npc on october 23rd adopted a new law on the protection and exploitation of the land border areas which drew sharp reaction from india as it was passed and a protracted military standoff between the two sides in eastern ladakh region on the same day, the President Xi Jinping signed a degree number 99 on the same day announcing that the law will come into effect from January 1, 2022. China said its new land border law will not impact the implementation of the existing border treaties and urged several relevant countries to avoid making wanton speculation about a normal domestic legislation a day after India has raised concerns of the legislation. Now, reacting to the new law, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson said that India expects that China will avoid undertaking action on the pretext of new border law, which could unilaterally alter the situation in the India-China border areas. So, such unilateral move will have no bearing on the arrangements that both sides have already reached earlier, whether it is on the boundary question or for peace, maintaining peace and tranquility along the LAC in India-China border areas. Okay. Uh, like this, it was said by the Ministry of External Affairs spokesperson Arandam Bagji. So, uh, over the years, India and China have worked out a host of agreements to resolve and handle the border differences. These include the Special Representatives Mechanism, the Agreement on Political Parameters and Guiding Principles of 2005, the WMCC Working Mechanism for Consultation and Coordination on India-China Border Affairs, besides protocols and CBMs to ensure peace and tranquility along the LAC. Now, both the countries have already held 22 rounds of border talks under the framework of the Special Representatives Dialogue, which was set up to find an early solution to the border dispute. India and China have also been maintaining that pending the final resolution of the boundary issue, it is necessary to maintain peace and tranquility in the border areas. However, China promulgated the new land boundary law in the midst of a 17-month border standoff between the two countries in eastern Ladakh. The eastern Ladakh border standoff between the Indian and Chinese militaries erupted on May 5th last year, resulting in a violent clash in the Pangong Lake areas and both sides gradually enhancing their deployment by rushing in tens of thousands of soldiers as well as heavy heavy weaponry. So, the tension escalated following a deadly clash in Galvan Valley on June 15 last year. As a result of a series of military and diplomatic talks, the two sides completed the disengagement across in the north and south banks of the Pangong Lake in February and the Gogra area in August. So, that's all regarding today's editorial session. So, hope uh, you got to know some information regarding this particular article. Thanks for watching my video sessions and happy new year to all my dear subscribers keep on supporting me this year also stay safe take care and bye